to Run With It, BC's only running fitness and health program. On this month's episode, we were in conversation with lifestyle expert Natalie Langston about foods to keep you energized during the winter season. Also, we spoke with Canadian elite runner Kevin O'Connor, who shares his passion for running and also gives some of his training tips. Plus, we have winter safety tips and a contest for your chance to win a couple of running LED safety armbands, so stay tuned for that. But first, let's go to our interview with elite triathlete Jeremy Hopwood. Check this out. How did you get involved in triathlons? Yep, so in terms of triathlon and that for me, it was um, one of those things where as a kid uh, growing up, I actually saw the um, Ironman Hawaii on TV. remember seeing that as a kid and for whatever reason that stuck in the back of my mind. It was like, hey, that'd be something cool to do. And then growing up, I actually didn't grow up as a swimmer or anything like that, but played a lot of uh, sports that involved running. So uh, things like soccer and the like. And um, But I always had it in the back of my mind. I like would like to actually go race triathlon and then when I uh, moved to Canada 12 years ago, my wife's family is uh, originally from Penticton, or still is. Her 93-year-old grandmother lives up there. And um, so that was, at the time, Iron Man uh, was hosted up in Penticton. And so it just, uh, knowing people who'd done it in the family and the like, it was like the natural step was to sign up and, uh, and to do that. And that was in uh, 2007. So this time, 10 years ago, was when I signed up for my first uh, Iron Man. And then a year later, raced up in Penticton and then kind of got the bug from there. But, and now there are three components, right? Like um, swimming, biking, and running. No. Now, swimming is something you started off late, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, like, I'm the uh, I'm the Australian who uh, learned to learn to swim late. Uh, did grew, grew up actually pretty close to one of the surf beaches in Australia down in Adelaide, but um, I never basically 25, 50 meters. That would have been as far as I could have got in a hurry if there was a shark behind me or something like that. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, came over here, and so that was actually an, that was an interesting challenge in mid 20s and that kind of dragging self to the pool and uh, getting lessons and that, and just getting the confidence factor. And that was uh, that was definitely something that took time, and that was uh, that was kind of the first challenge there is just getting comfortable in the water and that and uh, I mean and like anything took time on that but definitely feel a lot more comfortable in the water didn't grow up with that natural swimming stroke so it's still the uh, part of the sport that's my uh, biggest challenge and opportunity but uh, yeah so but I definitely remember the old the old outdoor pool at UBC which is no longer and uh, going there after work and that and trying to get some laps in and remember the first time I swam 200 meters first time I swam 400 meters straight and that so it's uh that was definitely like that was one of the cool things about triathlon was uh doing something that was very much outside my comfort zone on that front you are driven and that's so, so wonderful and for our viewers what is long distance uh triathlons yep so the triathlon world's got a, a few uh different distances so the one that you see in the olympics it's uh what's called standard distance or olympic distance and that's uh it's kind of based on the um the olympic longest event so 1500 meter swim 40 kilometer bike and then a uh, 10 kilometer run uh, long distance triathlon is normally anything up from what's called a half Ironman up until up until the Ironman distance and so a lot of people have heard of Ironman they might have seen Hawaii on TV uh, on the NBC shows and the like and uh, so that is actually a uh, 3.8k swim 180k bike and uh, marathon at the end uh, but there's a few different distances in between and uh, the world governing body ITU actually has its long distance distance which is a 3k swim 120k bike and 30k run and um, that's kind of it actually comes from a bit of a historical distance back in the time in a race that was in uh, France but uh, it's it's a good it's a good balance for long distance racing in that you don't fully beat up your legs with a marathon at the end but you're still out there for a good six hours plus on the day so well, that's amazing. And tell us about your training and nutrition. Um, like, basically, how important is nutrition and to you? Yeah. So, I mean, I think for me is like with training and nutrition and everything, it's all about like finding the balance and a rhythm that works for you. So, definitely say for me, I'm like like somebody who's like perfect with everything. I just try to make good decisions uh, where it goes through. And then, from a nutrition perspective, is like a lot of it's about like what's 
convenient but still a good decision right and so uh, that's something I look to like take through and then in terms of recovery and the like as well it's like the convenience and having something that works and it's easy to get to that's good. Yes, and tell us about your involvement with Powered by Chocolate Milk. Yeah, so I've been happy to be uh, working with Powered by Chocolate Milk for about four years now, I think. But the good the good thing with that relationship for me and like the actual product is something I've used for like the last eight nine years. So even before uh, working with Powered by Chocolate Milk is like the the great thing about it is like finishing a run, uh, finishing a bike or that. Like you can go by like the nearest corner store or anything like that, and like it's very easy to get and pick up, and it works and it works for me and that and that's a that's a big decision for me on like anything to around nutrition and that is that it's not something you have to like take half an hour to kind of prepare and that it's like great that you can just grab and you can grab something to recover and that straight after like either and for me I use it after like a hard session so whether it be um, like a hard run with intervals a um, like a long run or like a hard bike and so that's uh, that's where it fits into the the cycle for me. Yes, and you know, when you're in the peak season of your training, how important is your your sleep, your nutrition, and your training? Take us through your your you know your peak season of yep. training. Yeah. So for me, um, I'd say like the number one thing in terms of recovery, and that for me is uh, sleep. Like so, and for me, I found is that like if I try to cut back on sleep, that's when you start to feel sick, and then uh, that potentially impacts your training, and then it can start to snowball, and then it can even become a bit of a mental thing. So trying to get a good amount of sleep is something that's always been a big uh, priority for me. Uh, it varies depending on the amount of training you're doing but and, and the person. But for me, it's like between seven and nine hours like try to try to get and uh, to go from them so that's definitely a, a key thing in terms of training and that like that that also means making some decisions like when combining work and family and that with training and how much you can do and when you can do it so I'm not a I'm not a, a very early early morning person and so I do make the decision of trying to work out when I'm doing sessions or when I'm trying to get training in to make sure it like fits around so that I'm not getting into a bit of a debt around sleep. Yes, and also staying injury free. Yep, yep, for sure. And that's the other thing I think when you're uh, getting fatigued and even if you're getting all the sleep, you're getting all the recovery, when you're getting fatigued with the amount of training is like you can sometimes uh, start to notice that you just, uh, the brain's not fully there because it's like it's still tired and fatigued and that's when even if you're out on a run and that, you just need to be careful about not like doing something silly and stepping and twisting an ankle and things like that. And so I think it all, all goes into one from there. And then in terms of injuries, like I've been relatively lucky, nothing major, but what I try to do is get on top of anything. Like, so try to be relatively proactive around uh, like working with my physio and that. And if I do have a niggle is not waiting for it to disappear is like trying to understand it and then making the decision that's right for it, whether it's be doing exercises, for it, taking some rest or that, but not trying to push through for the sake of pushing through. Right, and your body's a machine, and, and you know, let's go back to how do you balance family and work and performing at high, you know, at a high performance level? Yeah, so for me it's, uh, I mean, it's always about like, okay, where, like, for me it's around priorities and like priorities is got family and got work and that and so they're definitely they're the big priorities in my life so a lot of it for me is like trying to fit in what I need to do uh, in order to get fit uh, in order to race and so from that perspective I use commuting to work like a lot uh, I'd say most weeks I've got about eight to ten hours of my training is uh, getting somewhere whether it be to work back and forth on the bike or uh, if I'm going to the uh, fam like the in-laws for dinner is like often sometimes I'll run there to go get dinner and just get in a short 20 minute run um, and the like and so utilizing different mechanisms like that to uh, to kind of uh, squeeze in some extra time in that and um, and also from a, a perspective of like it's always, as well as being time efficient it's kind of for me it's a good like mental uh, break or relief so when I finish the day instead of hopping in the car and sitting in traffic is I know if I ride home and that in and a lot of the times it's actually the same amount of time or quicker if I ride home from um, uh, downtown to Steveston or the like depending on the bridge traffic and that so I find I'm in a lot better mental space when I get home and then from there it's actually I find it easier than if I'm going to go do a run all that later in the day versus if I've been stuck 
stuck in a car or all the like and then get home and kind of get that end of day fatigue that a lot of people get including myself and you you do double workouts yeah so i mean i think that's the one the one thing with triathlon for sure is that because you're trying to get a balance in across uh three sports is that often be doing more than one session in a day and so once again that's about like choosing for me that's like how do you make that work and often that's choosing one of those sessions as a recovery session so um the perspective is that what is the key session of the day so is the key session a swim is the key session a run or is it the bike and making sure that you're putting the energy into in order to do that session properly but at the same time uh getting some of the mechanics practice or the techniques practice at the other sports so for me one thing if i'm doing a long run on the day or something like that is that that'll be the core session but then i might have a recovery swim later in the day or even just an easy bike ride or that just to flush out flush out the legs or to get some weight off the legs with a swim all up and so that's how I try to get it in there from that perspective. I'd say with running, if I'm in a run build, I actually often find if I do an easy run in the morning, if I, then I do a harder session later in the day, is that even if it's just a 15 minute, 10 minute, just jog, uh, jog after I've dropped off one of my kids at school or something like that, just 10 minutes to get the body moving, then I find that afternoon session actually goes a little bit better because the, mm-hmm. the, for me, the body's kind of woken up and understand, okay, this is what you're going to do with it later in the day. You got it down to a science, Jeremy. <laughs> That's wonderful. And what is next for you? Yeah, so next for me, I mean, just after having raced up in um, Penticton at the, um, like, it was the, um, it was the World uh, Championships for both duathlon and long course try and racing at age group up there. Uh, so now next up for me will be major thing is Gunnashore um, cross country. Uh, that's a, uh, a fantastic local race. Uh, it's great fun to go jump in the puddles, run in the <laughs> beach, whatever weather brings. And then a lot of the local running series here in Vancouver. So uh, we have some great local races, uh, whether it be the icebreaker, uh, AK, which is on my doorstep in Steveston. It's kind of always weird to be able to leave your house and 600 metres away. <laughs> you got a start line and then uh, looking forward to doing the uh, first half um, in February and um, hopefully no more snow this year and that we'll have the start line going for that. And then um, later in the year, still trying to work out exactly what doing, but I think I'll I think it's time for me to go do another iron distance triathlon of some description and uh, and uh, take some of the fitness from this year and then uh, look to target that. But where and when that one is, haven't yet decided on that front. Thank you. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thank you. Lifestyle expert Natalie Langston is here today to chat about some of her favorite foods to fuel you up during the winter season. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. This time of year is extra important to get your motivation up, especially when all we want to do is crawl back into our warm, cozy beds. Am I right? Yes. Or <laughs> not wanting to go to the gym or go for that run. Exactly. So it's the right amount of food to keep your energy up and get you out the door. That's important. So I brought a few recommendations for you today. So let's start with these. They're zest-free sun gold kiwi fruit, and they are so much sweeter than your regular green kiwi fruit, and they have that nice tropical taste as well. They have a smooth skin, and they have a yellow flesh. And they actually contain three times more vitamin C than oranges. Wow, three times. Yes, exactly. And it has potassium, I understand? That's right. So it has the same amount of potassium as a banana. And as you know, potassium helps our muscles to store and utilize energy. Chocolate fruit, chocolate and <laughs> I understand this is from museum. Well, I mean, it's a nice way to kind of have your kiwi fruit. Imagine you're on a <laughs> tropical beach when we're in the dark, rainy Vancouver days. That's right. So these are available at a variety of retailers, including Save-On, Superstore, Costco, Whole Foods, Choices, and many more. Just head to the website, zestfreekiwi.com. That's right, and we've added it to our yogurt, so a nice way to have your kiwi throughout your day. <laughs> so we have a few options now from Glory Juice. Uh, I love Glory Juice. It's This time of year is great for if you're looking for that warm, hearty meal, um, and also sticking to your health regime as well. Glory is great like that. So this is their classic Glory Bowl. I love this one. It's nice and hearty and warm, like I said, and it's a great warming winter lunch bowl. 
Yes, there's so great. many things, but I'm gonna get to that in a minute. There is a cauliflower chickpea bowl, and this is a favorite amongst their regulars. Uh, it's also extremely uh, creamy and filling as well. So you're gonna uh, definitely fill up on this one. Comfort food. Absolutely. And then we also have the mango maca smoothie bowl, and this is their most popular item. It's topped with granola and various superfoods. Um, I love this one. It's um, a little sweet, a little spicy. Uh, it's immune boosting, and it, uh, it's also antioxidant as well. So the one of the things I love about Glory Juice is that you're right. It's 100% organic. It's all made in house. It's uh, gluten free, uh, dairy free, uh, soy free, GMO free, and it's vegan friendly. And everything is nutrient dense, so you know that you're getting the best nutrients to support your health. That's right. So they have a, a few lo locations, four different locations in the Vancouver area, and they're opening a new one in Yelltown this winter. Wow, I can't wait to try it. Absolutely. So now we have some items from Bounce Bites, and I love their motto, uh, eat good, feel good, do good. I love this motto because it inspires people to aim to have a more vibrant and healthy life through nutrition. So that's why we brought these here today. So we have a couple options. Bounce balls, which are a great snack to have on the go. They come in nine different flavors. They are high protein and they're vegan friendly. And Absolutely, it's a nice snack. Uh, we also have Bounce Bites, which come in three different flavors, and they have a resealable pouch, so great when you're on the go as well. Uh, bounce Balls retail for $2.49 and up, and then the Bounce Bites start at $5.99. Um, and you can find more details, and you can actually order these online at ca.bouncefoods.com. Oh, I like the coconut all Ooh, that one's delicious. Try one. Okay, I will. They're very good. You can even take some with you. <laughs> exactly. So we have another option for you here. Now that we're back into our fall routines, it's definitely time to have a health checklist, especially when it comes to our digestive system. And I don't need to tell you how important it is to take care of your health so that you're functioning on an optimal level. And you'll also, when you're feeling good on the outside, you're going to feel good on the inside as well. It all works together. Uh, so we have an option for you when that's not all kind of working together because if you have digestive problems or constipation is the issue, I recommend Lax A because they are the number one doctor recommended solution uh, and laxative in their class. So I definitely recommend this. And there's a lot of lifestyle factors that can contribute to this, like travel, stress, a lack of fiber in your diet, uh, different medications that you might be using, pregnancy. Uh, so there's a number of different ways that this can affect you. And you can incorporate this into your daily health routine in a number of ways. So you can add this to your, the, you can add the powder to your morning water, just stir that up. You can also throw it into a smoothie. You can take some supplements. And perhaps if you would like to try, there's an overnight option as well. And you know there's a lot of Canadians who say that Absolutely. So this is something that is taboo. A lot of people don't like to discuss this topic. Uh, but I mean, if there's a fun fact. And nearly a quarter of Canadians are affected by this issue every year. So it's definitely a conversation that we need to have um, and normalize as well. And you can find more details at laxasolutions.com. Great information. Absolutely, thank you so much. It's a great topic to chat about. And you can find any details on what we've chatted about uh, over on my website at natalielangston.com. Great healthy foods on the go, and thanks for coming on the show. And thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to coming on next time when we chat about how to sneak your health in during the holidays. Can't wait, Natalie. It's my favorite time of year, so I can't wait to come back. Welcome back. Here are some winter safety tips. Number one, check the tread on your shoes to keep you from slipping. Number two, dress in layers and try to have your outer layer waterproof. Number three, be seen by wearing reflective gear and wear armbands with LED lighting. And number four, wear a hat or two to keep your head warm. And now it's time for a contest to win a couple of running LED armbands. Now the question is, name another running safety tip that wasn't mentioned on the show. To enter, simply go to our website and we'll do a random draw and good luck.
Joining me is Canadian elite masters runner Kevin O'Connor, who's here today to talk about his stellar running career. He's also going to share some training tips and also talk about his involvement with Sierra Sail. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Thank you, Christina. It's nice to see you and thanks for inviting me on the show. Yeah, so last time we talked was in April or May. Yes, it was. Now tell us about your recent, and congratulations on your uh, Victoria Half Marathon, by the way. And Thanks. Tell us about your training leading up to that. Um, when we talked uh, a while ago, I really wasn't feeling that good about my running. Um, and the one big change I've made since then is I've cut back my working hours. I was working an extremely lot of hours, like 65 hours a week and I was just very tired. I was complaining to a lot of people and um, it, it was sounding quite like a repetition. I thought I have to do something about this, either continue working long hours and suffer with the racing or try and get the racing you know, up to speed and reduce the hours and that's what I did. It's been like seven weeks and within two or three weeks I felt such a big change and suddenly I felt like a runner again and it was so <laughs> nice. And so you, so your training, you were able to train, like do double workouts? I did a few double workouts, but what I was, I was, the big difference was I wasn't going into workouts so fatigued. Um, I just felt every time I was started to do a workout or even a long run or steady run, I was just so tired. And that stopped now and that's been a huge difference. And that could lead to injury, right? If you're fatigued. Oh, right? absolutely. And overtraining as well. It's just something that um, you have to be very more careful, much more aware. And as you get a bit older, I decided like, I have to make a big decision. Right. And Kevin, with being an elite masters runner that you are, what are some tips? Like what's the most important thing? Like you were mentioning sleep, but what else? Uh, there's a few things, a good coach. Um, I also think a good running group, if you're running at a certain level, you need to be around people that are the same ability, to be accountable. Um, my coach is very important to me because I am an experienced runner, but I need to feed off of someone. If I say to my coach, who's John Hill, I've been with him for like seven years, I'll say, well, I think I can do this, or should we do that? He's the voice of reason. He knows me so well, so he'll just pull me back a little bit, so I'm not getting over-enthusiastic. Um, sleep, like you say, is very important. Consistency in training. Um, for instance, like if you can get six months of solid training without injury, that's fantastic. Avoid the injury. Um, and just really look after yourself and be, um, I think what you have to do is be a bit more realistic. So you're obviously going to slow down. And if you say to yourself, well, I may not be able to run this fast anymore, will this time be sufficient enough? Would it be good enough to keep you in, in the sport? And that's what I was able to do. Right. And what about nutrition? Nutrition, um, it's very important. I've always been pretty good at that. My vice is chocolate. Anybody that knows me <laughs> in the running sport knows I'm a chocoholic. I could give up all type of food just for chocolate a day. But yeah, you do have to be you know, very good about it. I mean, I think when you run lots of mileage or lots of good hard workouts, you can pretty much eat what you want. You can burn it off the next day. So um, still enjoy food, but make sure it's good quality. So nutrition's important. And just because you are working out a lot or running lots doesn't mean you can eat anything and lots of it. No, I mean, you, <laughs> but you can't, you can eat you, you, you can divulge a little bit. Yes. Um, so don't be, and I think people go over the, the, the other thing is like, well, I can't have this because I'm, I'm an elite runner or I'm training. So you can, but just don't overdo it. And I think as long as you're um, responsible with your food, you're getting the right type of food, then still enjoy it. Go out and have maybe that burger that you wouldn't normally have, but still eat very well, eat healthy, and uh, it will take care of itself. And you know, what drives you, Kevin? Um, there's a couple of things for me. <laughs> I'm, um, my sister was in a wheelchair. Um, she was born with spina bifida, and so she could never walk, let alone run. And again, people that know me know that I'm very driven by the memory of her. Um, she was there watching me um, in a wheelchair running around the track, and so I used to run for her and myself, and I still do. And, um, and then there's my own self-pride. I'm. I'm kind of this type of character that enjoys pain to a certain effect, like I enjoy running fast, I enjoy almost getting to the point where I want to be exhausted, like my favourite runs are workouts because I drive myself to the limit. But another thing, going back to the um, getting older, you have to pull that back a little bit. I cannot train as hard as I used to, I'm smarter, I can still do the workouts but they're not quite as quick. 
And also too, like, you know, you're an inspiration for people who are like viewers watching that, okay, they were here, they were really running fast because they might be like 30 years old, but now that they're 50, they can't run as, as fast. But it's also not worrying about other people. It's just going in there and running your best, but also being, you know, having a good coach. You have to, in certain races now, I won't win. And I barely would get to the front of the race for the first 2Ks. So I had to readjust my goals. I have to be more realistic. And that's where the coach comes in. So, and I know a lot of people, and I've spoken to a lot of people who probably ran at a bit higher level than me. And when they got to 40 and they realized they couldn't run as fast, um, I think their enthusiasm for, for racing or, or being even in the sport waned a little bit. And I really didn't want to come out of the sport. So I had to say to myself, look, I'm not going to win but I still want to be really competitive. And I started looking at like age group records or started looking at people that were around my son's age actually, or maybe I can beat them. And they're a bit slower, so maybe I'd be able to sit with them in a race and then kick away from them at the end. So yeah, you, your goals have to be a lot more realistic. And again, that's where a coach comes in because he's going to know a bit more about the racing times than you will, because we always want a bit better than what we can actually do. Right, and what is your favorite distance? Uh, I really prefer the half marathon. Uh, I think because it's slightly longer than the 10K, I can run at that sustained pace for that half marathon. I'm finding now the five and the 10K, whereas before I could run really quite quick, I am slowing down. And halfway through the race, I'm starting to feel, oh, this is a bit too quick for me. Whereas the half marathon, I can just sit in and, and ride that distance. Right, and so what is next for you? I hear you're going to Barbados. I am going to Barbados. So I'm going with my good friend Matt Lazelle. He was there last year. He ran in it. It's a 5 a.m. start. We're obviously going for a vacation as well, but Matt's a very good friend of mine. I recently went to his wedding. And so, yeah, I, um, I'd like to beat him. I don't think I will, but um, I'm going to set out to beat him for yes. sure. And, yeah, so it'll be a fun trip, but plus a, a, a good race as well. Right, and let's um, tell us about um, when you started running. I started running when I was 11 or 12, it's such a long time ago now. And I was playing, like most kids in England, playing football. And I used to be what we call a forward and a goal hanger, so I used to have to wait for the ball. And I just got really bored of it, impatient. And um, one day I decided to skip that, do a school sports day and I ran the 1500 and I was second and the only two people watching the whole event at school were my nan and my mum and I felt I'd let them down and that's my personality so I said to my dad I think I want to join a running club because I want to win it next year and that's just how it started. Oh, that's wonderful and you know and also too you know with the weather like nothing stops you from running outside. No no in fact sometimes the worse weather the better because I feel like I've achieved more. I, I, I think for me, I want to be out in the fresh air. Um, I don't want to be stuck indoors on a treadmill. So the hardest part for any athlete is just getting out there. So for runners, it's putting the shoes on, get out the door. Once you're running, you're going to feel so much better for doing it. And that feeling afterwards of accomplishing something, even if it's just a slow, steady run, and it was raining, it was cold, it was wet, it, it really doesn't matter. Like, get outside. It's refreshing. Yeah, it absolutely is, and it's so much better for your health. Exactly. And you know, if you have a group to, to meet as well, or to run with, you're accountable. They want you to show up. I want them to show up. So it's much easier to do that with somebody else. But if I'm by myself, I'm always going to run outside. That's wonderful. And also, tell us about your involvement with Sierra Cell. I've been with Sierra Cell now for about seven years, I think it is. Um, Mentally has looked after me so well. Um, I use both of their products, the Tropical Spray, spray and uh, the Formula 14, and um, it's done wonders for me. It's really helped me, um, the recovery side of the, the running, because I can still do the workouts as good as I did 10, 15 years ago, but it's the recovery time as you get older. You know, you get up in the morning, you're feeling a bit creaky, the old bones are like, oh, you know, you're getting out of bed and you feel like a 70-year-old. So the the uh, sponsorship I've had from Sierra so has been amazing. They've really looked after me well. And um, the products are fantastic. I, I can't say enough about them. And it's for like joint and pain and recovery. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, you know, um, I used to have uh, knee joint pain and I uh, started taking uh, the formula and it would go away completely and it would allow me to 
train really hard the next day as well or even just feel good about doing a long run so yeah and the uh, the tropical spray as well is uh, tropical spray is really good because if you put that on after hard workout it really gets nicely into the muscles eases them up and loosens everything up and um, even the smell is good and usually these days good. the products you have they just smell awful but uh, they're just very good and um, you know you just feel the the intensity of it going into new muscles and you feel like oh it's really working right and you and you take it on a yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I take it daily. Yeah, and um, it's the great. And if you look at um, um, their website, it shows you the other athletes that have been using it and what good it can do. And you don't even have to be an athlete if you're getting a little bit older and you've got some joint pain. So it's for all ages, and um, it's a really good product to, to use. And I actually listen to CKNW a lot, and they're doing a lot of advertisement on CKNW. So it's really working. Right, and you're, and you're you know, you know, taking care of your sleep, nutrition, your training, and Cerasel, it, it uh, makes you perform better. Yeah, it, uh, everything um, is important individually, but when you put them together collectively, it's, it's an amazing product because as a runner, you, you can do one thing and if you forget the other thing, and as you get a bit older, if you put all these items together, and Sierra Cell was kind of the last one I was looking for, because I didn't have that product before, and I was getting a little bit better, but I wanted to get to them Canadian records, and that was the product that really helped me, and as they say, uh, mentally has been amazing. Sometimes I felt I haven't really performed as well for her, but that was down to my working too much. And now I cut back the times, I, my, my amount of hours I'm working, I really feel that I can justify the sponsorship and go after them Canadian age group records. And you will. I'm hoping to, for yeah. sure. I, there's, I'm leaving no stone untouched now. It's, it's, this is the year I'm gonna do it. Kevin, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show, and I'd like to have you come back. I would love to. Maybe when I get them Canadian records, it'll be fantastic. It'd be wonderful. I thing. keep telling everyone I'm going to get them, and I haven't got them, so now I've got to live up to this. If you will. Thank you. Okay, thanks for having me. Thank you, and thanks. we'll be right back after this break. Thanks for watching. If you have a question or a comment about today's episode, go to our website on the screen. For past episodes of the show, go to our YouTube channel. Until next time, run with it. Run with it is sponsored by Be Well TV, Hype Hair, Mallory's Fashion Network and In for Women Clothing, Marriott Media Group, Sketches Performance Canada. Sierra Cell, and Powered by Chocolate Milk. Thanks to our partners at Powered by Chocolate Milk who are helping athletes improve their sports recovery.